Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Charles. Enjoy. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. As always, it's your host, Charles, and today we've got a great one for you. So I'm going to be sitting down with Didi, and if that name sounds familiar, it's because he was all over the news in 2017. (laughs) Him and his family are known as the Bitcoin family. They sold all of their possessions, pretty much liquidated everything, and went all in on Bitcoin. That was over two years ago, and they are still living the dream today. So in this episode, we're going to talk about why he made that decision, what he's been doing in the last two or three so years, and then we're going to end with some kind of tips on how to be happy and how to live a fulfilling life. But before we get into all of that, I do just want to take a quick second to thank my sponsors. The first is Roundly X. These guys are wonderful. It's a great way to dollar cost average into Bitcoin. It's very stress free. How it works is you link your credit or debit card, and with each purchase, they round it up to the next dollar, and that spare change gets invested into Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency of your choosing. It's kind of like the acorns of crypto, if you know what that is. The second is CoinFlex. They are actually the first physically delivered crypto futures exchange, and they've been implementing a ton of cool stuff lately. The first is that staking is now live. You will earn $10 USDT per thousand flex that you own per month. On top of that, they just implemented a new feature for scalpers. It's wonderful. You can limit in and out of trades by simply clicking on the order book. There's a video circulating. If you haven't seen it, go find it, watch it, see how easy it is. And then lastly, they've got these bracket order competitions coming up where if you have $888 in your account, you can participate in the competition and they're giving away $10,000 a day. So go sign up today. There's a link in the description below. Learn how to use the exchange. There is a bit of a learning curve and get ready for these competitions. Now, let's talk to Didi and get into the episode. It looks like our voices are about on par. I'm looking at the mixer right now. Uh, so if you're ready, and is it is it pronounced Didi? Yeah, just Didi. Okay, Didi. perfect. Yeah. Uh, then if you're ready, we can kind of just jump into it. Let's do it. Okay, perfect. Um, so Didi, before we really get into your whole story, uh, that surrounds Bitcoin. Can you just give us a little bit of background on yourself and what you were doing before you found cryptocurrencies? Um, yeah, of course. That that's a long story, but <laughs> I was just a normal guy. Um, I, in my youth, I played professional soccer, and after that, I went to school. I did some higher economics, and I quickly realized I didn't. Um, I wasn't the guy to work for a boss. So I started my own companies and I started my first company and then my second and my third. And that is like, I ran those com- car companies for about like 12, 13 years before that this Bitcoin um, story started. And uh, yeah, then it, then life uh, changed into a completely different lifestyle, family and uh, everything changed. It, was, it became a, a beautiful crypto adventure roller coaster type style of life <laughs> yeah man you uh your, your story is crazy i remember seeing it back in 2017 or so uh but you fit kind of the perfect profile for the people that i'm trying to get on you're an entrepreneur you've created many businesses you also now are fully immersed <clears throat> sorry fully immersed in the cryptocurrency scene um so for my audience who doesn't know your story do you think you could just give us you know, a quick background on you. Uh, you're kind of known as you and your family are kind of known as the quote unquote Bitcoin family. Uh, so can you just tell us a little bit of that story and what happened in 2017? Yeah, I will give you the short version because I think most people probably already heard it. And if not, and the long version 
will take an hour. And I, don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think you have an hour. So the short version is like uh, what, what I said. I, I went to school. I did everything uh, normal people do. But um, in, in your life, you you, you um, evolve, you know, as a person as well. And for me, um, during the time that I built up those businesses, I also started mining bitcoins in 2013 because I thought it was a revolution and was going to, you know, disrupt the monetary system. And, you know, I, w I was the type of guy that always was in for this re revolution things. But because life changes all the time and uh, there were two things in my life that happened. One is my mother died when she was 48. That was what drove me to become a workaholic and build all those companies because at that point I was 24 and I couldn't face the feelings. So I started to become this workaholic, build up companies. And then when I had built up all those companies and I was on the top of the world and I had my Jeep Cherokee and my Cabriolet and my big house and all that stuff that everybody taught me that would make me happy if I would reach that, you know, that, that, that status of materialism. Um, then exactly at that point, my father calls me and he's like, Didi, I have one more year to live. I went to the hospital. I, was, I am diagnosed with cancer and um, yeah, they gave me one year. So at that point, you have everything you have, want, ever, always wanted to have if it comes to materialism. And then your world again crashes because you lose your father. So at that point, I hired some managers to run the companies and I spent all the 2015 um, with my father, you know, the last Easter, the last Christmas, the last time watching a football match, all that stuff that you want to do the last time when you know that somebody is going to die. Um, at the same time, I started to spend some more time with my own family, of course, because I didn't work that hard anymore that year. And then in January 2016, my father died after a year. And, you know, then you get into this roller coaster of arranging everything for the funeral and the inheritance and all the fights be uh, uh, on money again between people about the inheritance. And that ended up in me having a huge burnout in mid-2016. So at that point in life, I really was like empty. My energy was gone. I couldn't do anything anymore. And my family um, was not... You know, they, they suffered under the, my my life at that point, and that that made me realize, okay, now I really need to change life. So, end of 2016, I told my family, okay, let's start to travel the world for a few months. Let's go to Thailand to a beach, have some family time, give me my you know my mental reset I needed, and that's what we did. We went to Thailand, uh, spent a lot of time on beautiful beaches, thinking about life, thinking about family, thinking about money. Uh, thinking about all the values I had in my life. And, and I quickly realized that I was getting back energy and that I was, I was becoming a dad, you know. I w in the time you, I was this workaholic type of guy, I didn't spend the time with my kids as, as much as I should have. And now during this, this world trip, I was feeling, wow, this is life, man. This is really, I can see my kids grow up. I can hug my wife and I want, I can, you know, do whatever I want all day. And, and that, that feeling was beautiful. I didn't want to let go of that feeling. And then in a certain moment, moment we went to Bali. And in Bali, my friend called me that helped me with setting up the mining in 2013. And he was, Didi, do you still have your Bitcoins and your Doge coins? And I said, yeah, I still have a few. Uh, why? And he's like, check them. They are flying. They are going up and the community is growing. So I started to investigate in the community and I saw it. And all the forums, more and more people were talking about it. More people believed in the same revolution I used to believe in. I lost my faith after the 2014 crash. So, uh, but because I saw that the community was growing, I, I gained a little bit more faith. And, and that was just the perfect timing. So I went up to my wife. I told my wife, you know, on the beach in Bali, we are very happy. We are traveling around the world with two backpacks. We don't have any luxury stuff around us. The kids are happy, you are happy, I am happy. Let's continue this lifestyle. Let's sell everything we have, go all in Bitcoin, because I think it's going to grow. I think it's going to increase in value. And then use that money, which we could make with a profit, to help other people in their life, with life. So, you know, help poor people, because that made us happy, you know, visiting other poor countries and helping people and, you know, just hanging around with those people and explaining them their life and that the, the Western life they see is not heaven, you know? Um, 
and that is what she 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 wa- she 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 looked at me and she was like, Didi, you want to sell your Jeep? You want to sell your Cabriolet? Your motorcycle? Our house? Everything? I said, yeah, let's do it. Let's just do it. And then after a few chats, you know, and I told her, and she she understood. She 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 also agreed. Like, this is the best life lesson we could give our children. Or we fly back to Holland, continue our lifestyle, and just hunting for more and more money and more and more goods and more stuff, and teach our children the thing that that will once uh, one time make them happy in the future. Or we just stop living that crazy lifestyle change our life ourselves, lead by good example, and show the kids you can be happy without all that materialistic stuff. You can be happy by just living, you know, traveling around the world, uh, doing normal stuff, what you like to do. Most people do a job because of the money aspect. And we think now you need to do a job because of your passion, because it's your passion. So my wife agreed. Um, We flew home. I started selling online my cars and everything in Bali already that they were sold and, and invested in Bitcoin. We flew home, put the house for sale for Bitcoin that was sell, sold in two weeks' times for Bitcoins, partly Bitcoins, partly Euros. The Euros were exchanged to Bitcoins as well. Then I discovered my saving plan, my kids' saving plan, then I discovered my pension plan, all the things I thought that would be a security in the future, and I took them all. I invested everything in Bitcoin. And then we need to give the house to the new owners. And then we realize, shy, we also have the furniture. So we started selling the furniture, the bike, <laughs> the clothes, because we didn't have anything. We went living on a campsite. There was no room for all this stuff. I needed to rent four garages full with stuff to, to sell them after we sold already the house. So the garages were packed with all the stuff we had in the house. And we were selling from the garage, making garage sales. And we were living on this campsite. And people found out. The media found out and they were like, wow, what? You sell your house with Bitcoins? And and then slowly the media came and they came flying from all over the world. They came from Ukraine, they came from Australia, America, and they flew and they wanted to make documentaries. And so we, get, we, we came in this roller coaster of media, which was very strange for us. And exactly at that point, we, tell, we told each other it was December, Bitcoin was flying up. And we were like, wow, no, we are going back to the beach to sit on the beach, have this relaxed lifestyle and enjoy Bitcoin going up. And we will see what happens. I'm not going to continue this craze in media. And then we were in Thailand. And at that point, people confronted us in the restaurant. Are you this guy from the Bitcoins? Can we make a selfie? And we started laughing. Oh, man. <laughs> you want to make a selfie <laughs> with me? And and there was a Russian guy, and he made a selfie. And after that selfie that came online, there was this documentary uh, company that's called Arted. It's one of the biggest ones in Europe. And they flew over to Thailand and made another documentary. Yeah, And then, you know, we just sat together, my wife and me, and we were like, okay, we can, um, you know, we can stop with this whole crazy thing and just, you know, say no to everything in life. Or we just say yes. And we embrace this Bitcoin family, you know, um, this Bitcoin family sticker that, that, that they put on us, and we just use that one to change the world. Let's try it. Let's let's say yes to all this craziness. Say yes to all the media and all the interviews, and just do it. And if we can make some money with it, we give it away, and we get and we, we become happy of it, and while we help other people in the world. So that is what we started three years ago, and we are still doing this uh, on the day to day. Yeah, it's a truly inspiring story. First off, I just want to say thank you for sharing a little bit of background on your family, and I'm truly sorry to hear about that. Uh, but I think it did spark this kind of change that you needed in your life. You were so hyper focused on building your businesses and making money. And I feel like a lot of people in the cryptocurrency scene and industry are very similar. Uh, They just want to make as much money as possible and they neglect pretty much everything else, their health, their happiness, their social circles, their families. Uh, And you said enough is enough. I don't want to be so consumed by my work. Uh, I'm going to sell everything. And you literally sold everything. It was the cars, the motorcycle, the house, your furniture and clothes even. You got rid of the savings. Everything. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is truly, I almost want to say insane, but also inspiring at the same time. 
Uh, and I think a lot of people, when they heard your story, they saw that big headline, you know, every or family sells everything for Bitcoin. Uh, and they don't really, they didn't really get to know your backstory. Uh, but you've been involved in the scene since 2013. You've been mining. Uh, so you're, you're considered an early adopter in every sense of the word. Um, and so you, you knew what Bitcoin was about. It wasn't this rash decision to just sell everything as Bitcoin starting to go up. Um, so I, I kind of want to know what you've been up to since, cause you know, there was kind of this huge hype around you. Uh, everyone was talking about you. And then as the price declined, not only did they stop talking about you, your, your story and everything, but they kind of just stopped talking about cryptocurrencies in general. Uh, so what have you been up to since 2017, other than kind of traveling the world and spending time with the family? Um, yeah. Oh, what what did it, what didn't I do? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I took all the steps to start working. I think I have been more working more than ever. But uh, I've been working to something I really like. You know, I like the combination of um, this revolution that is really changing the world, opening the world for everybody when it comes to the monetary system. But at the same time, decentralizing the world and making the world um, more honest. Um, so, of course, in 2017, I was an advisor for many ICOs. So I, I, I am my ICO bubble time as well. <laughs> but luckily, um, the ICOs I all supported, they all became a company and they all are still alive and they all have still have fun. So that's, that's, I was lucky not to say yes to all the crazy things. Um, I, you know, you get in the, into this crypto lifestyle because you just live on crypto. We don't have bank accounts. We don't have money anymore. We just have crypto. We still are all in. So what, what we did is we, we just figured out how can we survive on, on crypto. If it is Bitcoin, if it is Verge or Litecoin, you know, whatever cryptocurrency is accepted in, the, in, in, in that part of the world we use. And that is the game we have been trying to play since 2017. How can we solely survive on crypto without banks? And this game is what we have been doing. I've been writing a book. The first book is already out in Dutch and uh, German and now soon in English. Um, and we are, I'm writing the second book. Um, I'm still advising a few companies uh, in crypto. So I'm part of Blockchain Valley, which is uh, started in Bulgaria. I'm part of um, yeah, a, a few companies that, that you know, like, like Excel Trip, you know, that, that makes it possible for me to book all my tickets and all my um, hotels with crypto. Um, I, I became an ambassador, ambassador for them. I, I became an ambassador for Decent Bet. That, that part is decentralizing the gaming world. So I, I've been doing everything in crypto. And next to that, uh, I've been speaking on conferences as a keynote speaker about not only crypto, but also life. You know, all the people ask me the same. How? How could you? <laughs> How could you sell everything? <laughs> and how do I start? What, what is the number? What is your first step? So. Um, at the moment, I'm creating this this plan of steps that people can make to do the same. Um, I, I want to give this away for free as well because I want to show people it's possible. People are always afraid. They live in fear. And they live in fear in in in, in, in making um, making choices. And people need to realize that if you make a choice, there at the end you always have again two choices. You know, if I turn left in this road at the end i can turn left or right again and i can turn right or left again you know and it, that, that that makes life adventurous and i think the first step that people need to realize to get rid of all the stress the financial stress that people are having at the moment is is just minimalize you know if you don't have monthly cost anymore you can live wherever you want you can do whatever you want you don't have monthly costs you don't have the stress of making that same amount of money every month to live you know and that, and that and that changes the whole game because then your brain starts to think about opportunities and in, instead of about in fear and that is what the most people find really difficult because it's the first step that's the most difficult step it's the same when you bungee jump or you jump out of a plane you know if you walk up the stairs and you, you're you are almost about to jump with bungee jumping man you shit your pants you're afraid <laughs> you don't want to jump your body says no, your mind says no. And then when you you have this liberating feeling and you have this wow you know, effect and you want to jump again and again, I think it's the same with life. If you keep con 
running in circles and keep continue this, you know, this 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 race, this red race for materialism, then you will never escape it. And if you just try it once, and, and we did it by selling everything, you know, and, and then you do you just try it. You sell, you go travel, and if you don't like it, you stop, you go back to your country, you take a job again and you buy a house again, whatever. You know, it's always possible to return. Yeah. So, Sorry. I've been preaching this to many people the last three years, and uh, yeah, this is what we do. We still uh, make. Last year we made seventy-five videos. Uh, we participated on fifteen podcasts. I we de- participated in two documentaries last year, and we did more than uh, I think fifteen YouTube shows. And so it's, yeah, we are busy, still busy. Yeah, you're clearly keeping busy, um, but I I really like what you're saying about the fact that. You know, a lot of people are just scared to take that initial step. I quit my job, I'd say, six months ago to kind of work on my businesses myself. And it took months of planning and I was back and forth. Should I do this? Should I keep my job? Should I just do the businesses on the side? And I finally, you know, made that move and I quit my job. And I don't think I've been happier. It's it's truly liberating and a beautiful feeling to kind of leave what was making you unhappy behind. And you guys have done that to the fullest extent. Um, so I'm sure you get, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> I'm sure you get this question a lot, uh, but you sold in 2017, you know, closer to the top. Uh, after we started to decline, what was going through your head? Did you regret what you did at all, or or what were you thinking at that time? No, not at all. We we started to buy Bitcoin in January 2017 already, or February, when I was selling my cars online and everything. So that that was about Bitcoin was about 1700 at that time, and then um, I, the last investment I did was about was my pension fund, and that was about 6k. So for us we we yeah we just enjoyed you know the the bull run for us 6k went to 20k yeah? and, and and a huge part with, was bought at 3k so it went times seven of course at that point we were still inexperienced so we didn't sell everything at the top i was still learning how to trade so uh, there, there was a there, there was a part i think about 25 percent that i sold at the top and the rest was um, kept and then you get in this bearish time. And then at first you think, ah, oh, we'll take two months, three months, and at four months. And you know, and then all the people start asking, how did you feel? How do you feel? Oh man, are you, were you not afraid? Well, no, because the step we already took was to live a very normal life without many um, monthly costs. So whatever Bitcoin did, we could survive, you know? We, we 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 took a step. We were spending about six k a month in Holland, in normal life, and now we live this traveling lifestyle about two and a half k a month. So whatever Bitcoin did, if it go went up or down, we were still just spending two and a half k a month, and that was what made us happy. We just lived in normal backpacking places on beaches in Thailand. We ate normal Thai food, which was was cheap. We didn't buy Lamborghinis and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, we just continue living a normal life and if you if you if you lose all that pressure for thinking and saving for the future you know what you are and we are educated all our life oh you need you need to make sure that when you're 60 you're safe you need to make sure you have enough funds you need to make sure you have enough savings fuck that i want to live now and how do i live now just to don't worry about the future i want to live in the moment Sounds very cliche, but by living in the moment, you must not worry about the future. So how can I worry about Bitcoin going up or down? I just need to worry about how get I, how do I, which flip flops do I wear now to the beach? <laughs> what kind of Bacardi Coke do I want to drink? What, the small, you know, small steps. Yeah. And that, and, and that 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 released the pressure for us of of worrying about going down, going up. And of course, if Bitcoin went up, I had this internal feeling, yeah, you know, I was right. <laughs> And they go, of course. of course, when Bitcoin went down, I was like, fuck that. Don't worry Again. about it. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was always able to, to, to grab back to this feeling when we started. You know, it doesn't matter. We have enough to, 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 uh, to live the next few months, and that's okay. And if Bitcoin goes up, we, we can continue this beautiful life. If Bitcoin goes to zero, we are bankrupt. 
then it's what, what really it, it's really true it's like people still ask ah you have a backup plan no we don't yeah. if bitcoin goes to zero tomorrow or disappears we are bankrupt as hell <laughs> yes of course i can go live with my 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 wife's parents for a few months or my, with my brother or sister but we will be bankrupt as hell nothing yeah or close nothing so you, you don't care. Yeah, you you really uh, you sold with conviction, and you are sticking to it, and you're really living the life that you wanted to live in 2017, and you haven't let the price affect you. Uh, and I, I love the idea of you know living in the moment, uh, kind of being present, and not worrying about the future. Uh, and it's very cliche, like you say, but you know it's it's harder to live uh, than to just say. And you guys are proof that you are doing it. Um, so you're you're living on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I, adoption is not where it, you know, many people want it to be yet, and it's still kind of difficult. Uh, so I want to ask you, you know, how can others go all in right now, and what are some of the struggles that you have faced in the current world where Bitcoin is not adopted by everybody? It's not adopted by everybody. But it is possible but you need to be creative and most of the time it is not as easy as using your bank account or your credit card i agree with this some part of the world it's even easier to use bitcoin you know because i need use my phone and my wallet on it and some parts um, you need to be creative but exactly that part makes it more an adventure for me you know Okay, I, I arrive here in Spain. How, sh how, how can I spend bitcoins here in a supermarket? So I go to the supermarket, I you know, ask around, is there a supermarket where I can spend bitcoins? No, of course not. But that gives me another beautiful video, which I can share again and people, you know, get, yeah, get, get to hear about bitcoin again. But then you discover, oh, there's a website in Spain, for example, where you can buy online coupons. And those coupons I can buy with bitcoins. And those coupons I can spend in the supermarket. Okay, I buy 100 euros of coupons with my Bitcoin and I use that coupon to spend in the supermarket. That way, my money or my Bitcoin still doesn't touch any banks because I exchange my Bitcoin online on a website to a coupon that I can use in a store. You need to be creative and it's a game and it's not always convenient, but because I don't have a job, you know, I have time. <laughs> I have time to figure out those things now and then. So. And some things you book online, you know, the flights, the travels, the, the housings, the apartments, you can always book this already online. Now we make use of the Spanish company provided us of a Bitsa card. It's a, it's a sort of a prepaid credit card. Okay, I can put my Bitcoins in this, on this prepaid credit card and I can pay all over the world whether you accept Visa. We also have a Wirex card, of course, but Wirex is, you know, a little bit more KYC. So this bits are card is a little bit less KYC. So that is a little bit better for me again because it's more supporting the revolution, you know, um, the revolution of decentralizing the monetary system uh, and, and giving us power back uh, on our own money. So you need to be creative, but uh, you need to you need to want to do it. You know that that's the problem. And, and let's be honest, we were in a very luxury uh, position that we could sell a house, you know, and we could take the uh, how do you say this? The, um, yeah, we had a mortgage, of course, but we had some. Yeah, we had the uh, equity in your house. Yeah, we had more equity in the house, so we could take it and invest it. So that's not for everybody. Um, not everybody has this luxury position, but if you have it, it why not? I, I made a video in, in February last year. I, I asked on YouTube, everybody, please, will the next Bitcoin family stand up? Bitcoin is three thousand five hundred euro. We went all in on this number. Please do it now. It's February. It will go up. No, Didi, it will go down to 1,000. It will go down to 900. It will go back. But maybe it will go up to six, and then you double your money. But even my best friend who sold his house at that time, point of time, he had more than 200,000 euros that he could spend in Bitcoin. Even he was afraid to do it. I told him, take 50K. You know, if you don't want to do all in, take 50K. He was like, no, I need to buy a new house. It took four or five months. Bitcoin was at 14K. Yeah. He would have quadrupled his money. He would be a millionaire almost. Right. So it's just do it, you know, and people are always afraid. 
Yeah, it's it, it's hard for people who aren't in the industry to make that first step like we talked about earlier. It's always that first yeah. step. Um, and, you know, you talked about the fact that sometimes you have to be creative and that it's not the most convenient. But I think that's one of the things about decentralization is that centralized organizations, they make things very convenient for people. Something like Visa or MasterCard. Yeah. It's very convenient to go and just swipe your card. Um, <clears throat> and so you need to kind of give up some of that convenience to gain that freedom, that monetary freedom that comes with decentralization. And you guys are doing it in a wonderful way. You've made it work. You are an inspiration to others. I know one other person who I think, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I know one other person who I believe does most of his transactions in Bitcoin. You probably know him, and that's Ken Bozak. Um, yeah. And, and you guys are both just inspirations to many who are trying to further adoption, become a part of this movement. Um, and it, it, it's truly inspiring. I can't say it enough. Um, but you're right. You know, not everyone is going to go all in on Bitcoin. They can't give up everything. Uh, and so your advice there is to maybe take a quarter of it, take 25 percent, invest it. Uh, and that way you at least have a decent amount of exposure, but you're not all in. Um, you, you know what it is? My, my advice would be to all those people that are listening now, for example, you know, we are on the, in this point in the 20s now that most of those people maybe have their third or their second car and if you want to well, why would you want to have three cars at the moment you know sell two cars right <laughs> and invest that part in bitcoin so you won't be missing out on this you know i think this financial boom that is going to happen the same what happened to the 90s with all the internet you know and the googles and amazon it, it's going to happen to bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies or blockchain project projects as well that, that's 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 just the system that's how it works so just sell a few of your stuff sell your garage sell your all the stuff on your attic do it get we did a garage sale last year in december freezing cold the newspaper in holland they were dds bankrupt he's doing his garage sale we sold 1.2 bitcoin and on, on stuff we didn't use anymore you know what still was in the garage that 1.2 Bitcoin became like, <laughs> that became the most uh, profitable <laughs> gamut <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah, it was so, worth, you know, 15 to almost 20K right there um, yeah, at so, its peak. So I would say to people, just take baby steps. And, and, and you know, if you don't, don't. At the end, you will. Um, will be confronted with Bitcoin. You know, I went to Bitcoin City. Sorry, I always talk too much. But I went to Bitcoin no, City okay. in Slovenia. And in Slovenia, I saw the proof that I could live all my life on Bitcoin. There is Bitcoin City, BTC City, they call it. It's in Slovenia. And there is a 98% of my needs I could buy directly with my Bitcoin app. There is a company called Eli. This company, I think uh, Roger Ver is one of the investors in that one. And they made it possible that we can that you can spend your direct Bitcoin payments in more than 400 stores in the country over there. And you can buy everything from your groceries to your new iPhone to your clothes, your nights, your everything. So I saw with my own eyes it's possible. And then I just always questioned are other people around the world, are they really so blind to see that the step to adoption is really, really small? You know? Every store in the world can just start accepting Bitcoin by you adding a QR code, you know, or, you know, calling this Ellie or calling Light IM or calling one of those third parties that make it possible for them to accept Bitcoin next to Visa, next to MasterCard, next to Maestro. This is a very small step. Yeah, it's uh, adoption happens slowly. And I think that these steps are starting to be taken because we now see companies like this that make it very easy. And one by one stores do start accepting it. Um, but I, I want to touch on the fact that, you know, you're really preaching this idea that you can reduce what you have in your life, the, this quote unquote useless junk. Uh, and I'm a big fan of, you know, living a pretty minimalistic life when it comes to materials. I don't own a lot of stuff myself. I find more happiness in 
camping, traveling, spending time with friends, yoga, meditation, that kind of thing. Uh, and it has made me a much better person, in my opinion. Uh, and I think that others should take this advice and can very easily take this advice to at least reduce some of this junk that they have. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, I always like to ask my guests, you know, what they're most excited for in the coming 12 months. And you're on the front lines of adoption. So I really am interested in what you're looking forward to in 2020. Oh, my God. And uh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a terrible question for me. I'm looking now <laughs> forward to a Bacardi Coke in the sunset I'm about to see in 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, so you live very in the moment. So it's it's hard for me to ask this. But at the same time, like, you know, you have at to at least time, have thought yeah, about of it. Course. I, of course. I, I'm really excited to see if anything will happen because of the halving. You know, um, we can already see some price action uh, for, for the people that love the price actions. But, you know, I was amazed by Bitcoin uh, SV increasing 100 percent, you know, yeah. uh, Bitcoin Cash did like 30 percent. So um, price wise, I think it will be a very, um, a very crazy year. I don't know. Maybe we will even see a new uh, a, a new uh, all time high, but um, it can also take another another year, you know. But I'm I'm very so I'm, I'm very looking forward to see what ha will happen with the whole thing. How will this influence uh, the miners? You know, uh, will it still be profitable for the miners to, to stay mining? You know, if they just um, only earn half um, of what they have been half, uh, earning last year, and at the same time, I know that a lot of miners need to refresh their hardware and. Will they be able to be um, investing in hardware while they know that you know Bitmain and all the bigger ones already are up front? And do they want to take the risk while there is a halving coming? So I think at the mining, they will change a lot in mining uh, um, respect of the Bitcoin part. Adoption, I'm really looking forward to a few projects um, uh, to to uh, continue. Um, I'm, I heard that there's a company that is now trying to implement that uh, supermarkets can use their barcode scanner to, sc to scan a Bitcoin wallet as well, so that the supermarket doesn't have to invest in new hardware to start accepting Bitcoins. So that, that would be really, really cool, you know, that could happen. And at the same time, I see in the States, I see so many spots um, integrating Bitcoin. I, I saw the many Pacquiao Foundation was now um, accepting Bitcoin and Verge and Litecoin because that the, the, the Verge team made this possible for them. So you see some basketball players. So in my opinion, it will be sports, um, entertainment, um, one of those two that will you know make make crypto go mainstream. And you know, when those people start to sing about musicians start to sing about Bitcoin, when, when the sport players start to ask salaries and Bitcoin, you know, all that stuff, which all the other youth is looking up to. Um, I think we will make huge steps in 2020. I think 2020 will be a very special year that many of us will uh, remember when we are old. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of this perfect storm in a sense. We've got the halvening like you're talking about. Uh, and then on top of that, we are slowly starting to see adoption and companies making it easier for people to adopt cryptocurrencies as a whole. Uh, not only Bitcoin, but many other cryptocurrencies. Yeah. And, and at the same time, we must not forget, we are seeing maybe a third world war start, maybe another few countries going bankrupt, maybe a few banks going bankrupt. Uh, that sounded cool, banks yeah. going bankrupt. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, there are so many things, there are so many tension. And at the same time, if you look at um, the, the, you know, the, the, the life what we were talking about is like the mindset of people and, and, and the emotional state of people, it could be a very special year because people are evolving. And they are understanding more and more that accumulating wealth is not the goal in life. And when more and more people start to understand, understand that accumulating wealth is not the goal in life, um, they will have less need for those people that um, fool them into this game of accumulating wealth. Yeah. And that is exactly the possibility that the, the, the blockchain tool and the Bitcoin tool are providing us. So that's, it's, 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 it looks like it's all coming together, I think. And um, I think, yeah, I think it's a beautiful time to live in. People are definitely waking up to the fact that chasing wealth and accumulating wealth are 
not going to cause cap happiness. Uh, and again, you mentioned, you know, banks going bankrupt and a potential war. It's all kind of a perfect storm. You know, it's, it's all stuff that, you know, it's sad to capitalize on, but I think that it is a perfect storm for Bitcoin uh, specifically. So I think we're going to see some huge moves this year, not only with regards to price, but also adoption as well. Um, so thank you for kind of giving us your outlook. I know you like to focus on the day to day, the, you know, you like to be here now, that sort of thing. Uh, but I appreciate you giving us your outlook. Uh, one last thing before we wrap up, I always like to get a kind of biggest tip from my guest. Uh, so do you have, you know, a big, I know you've given us a lot of stuff that you can do to kind of get involved and give your life to Bitcoin in a sense, but do you have a, a biggest tip for anyone who's betting big on Bitcoin right now? Uh, lose fear. The biggest tip is lose fear. Lose, lose the fear of losing everything because everything is nothing. So if, if people are able, able to lose the fear of losing everything, you know, I think that's the biggest tip that you can get people because you can always accumulate that everything again and again and again. But you need to lose the fear to lose it the first time because then you will realize that it's nothing. I maybe that's the biggest tip. No, I love it. It it's hard. It's harder to put into practice than it is to say one hundred percent. But I think that you know, if you slowly start changing your mindset in very little ways, that fear starts to dissipate. Uh, you know, it's hard to just go from zero to one, you know, no Bitcoin to owning nothing but Bitcoin, giving everything else. But if you slowly start changing your mindset, start living, you know, in the present, uh, slowly start accumulating Bitcoin. It's a whole process that you can kind of move on from not owning it to being, you know, full blown. I'm a Bitcoin fanatic. I my life revolves around it. So I think that's a perfect. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and of course, people could start by going to do bitcoinfamily.com. There we <laughs> go. My, buy my book. <laughs> there's a lot of information of um, how we emotionally coped as a family with making this totally mind uh, uh, change, you know, a life change. So if you're as a family are doubting because of kids, because of schooling, because of money, because of all that stuff, um, and yeah, it's, it's a cool thing to read the book because a lot of people uh, g gave the feedback. Wow. Yeah, it, it really helped me in helping uh, to understand your mindset and change my mindset. Yes. Yeah. So we'll Sorry. I was just yeah. going to say, I think that that's the biggest thing right there is the mindset. And you guys have lived through it. So I highly recommend if anyone's kind of considering this, uh, but is having trouble mentally, check out the book. We'll have a link in the description below uh, so that you can go check it out by the book. Um, so I, I really appreciate you coming on, taking the time. I, I think this was a wonderful talk for anyone who's kind of on the fence on, you know, getting more involved. Uh, before we go, is there anything else that you would like my audience to know? No, not really. I, I just, uh, I'm very thankful for being on the show. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me into your show. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And if you have any questions, you know, don't like me, look at me as a crazy guy. You send me a message on Telegram. Send me a message on Twitter. I'm, I'm always uh, online and I'm always available to help you with whatever you need. If it's mindset, if it's how to buy Bitcoin, if it's how to sell Bitcoins. And I'm always open to help people all over the world. So uh, don't, uh, don't be afraid to send me anything. Thank you so much for offering that. We will have links to your Telegram and the Twitter as well. Uh, you sound, I mean, like you have been very responsive to my DMs. You are very open to the idea. You've been very helpful with everything that I've talked to you or asked about. So for anyone else, please reach out if you're having any kind of doubts. Uh, Didi will be more than happy to walk you through things and talk to you and kind of ease your mind. Uh, so again, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you taking the time. I, I had a wonderful time. Me too, man. Thanks for asking. And I wish you a very beautiful evening. I need to head out to drink my Bacardi Coke with the sunset. Enjoy it. <laughs> All right, that wraps up another episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I just want to take a quick second to remind you to leave us a review and subscribe to the show. We would greatly appreciate it if you did. And we look forward to seeing you next episode.